I'm going to show you how to fix a uh, a quiet key on a, uh, a digital keyboard, uh, music keyboard. Um, in this case, it's a CME M key MIDI controller, which um, right now I'm running into a uh, an iPhone as a as the uh, synthesizer. I think it's running um, sample tank free. Um, so the problem I'm seeing is that uh, one or more of the keys is, is requires a lot of force to get sound out of. So, like, this is the way it should be. Kind of soft presses are quiet and hard presses are loud. So here's some kind of soft presses. So this key, what is it, C, D, E, F, G, this G is, uh, requires a lot of force to get sound out of it. Whereas the other keys are quiet and loud, quiet and loud. So um, if you Google this, you'll find a lot of guides that explain how to uh, take your uh, take the keyboard apart and clean the sensors. Um, in this case, I went through that process, and it was kind of fiddly. Uh, but at least, at least for this keyboard, I didn't have to remove all the keys. I just had to remove the key bed and then uh, unscrew all these little screws holding the printed circuit board on. And once I took the printed circuit board off, it exposed all the uh, little, kind of like, like in a remote control, these kind of uh, sensors where when you hit the key, it presses... Uh, a rubber part down that has a conductor and that closes a circuit on the circuit board. Um, so I cleaned the circuit board with alcohol. I cleaned the rubber pieces with um, warm water and uh, dish detergent and dried everything and put everything back in place, which was the hardest part because getting the, this is the back of the little uh, rubber, um, you know, the little rubber sensor thing and you have to push these little nipple pieces through the printed circuit board without tearing them. I found that a little, uh, one of these little uh, devices that are for, um, you know, like cleaning your teeth um, worked well for that because it's kind of got a soft rubber tip and it didn't tear the rubber as I was pressing it back through the printed circuit board. Anyway, that helped a little bit, like uh, it kind of made most of the keys more consistent, but I still had this quiet key. And um, I found out what the what a solution was. And I'm not saying that this is really the um, the root cause. The root cause is probably the case that the sensors have gotten less sensitive. Uh, due to the conductive coating wearing off, just like what happens with your remote control. But this solution actually worked really well. So here, here's before I fix it. Requires a lot of force to get some sound out of it. You can remove the key, just um, pop this little spring off here, pull it up and over, and just drop it down. And now uh, you also have to release, uh, loosen this little latch here so that the key will pop off without, without, uh, breaking. Sorry, you can't see that. All right. So, here's the key coming off. And underneath, here's the sensor I was just talking about. Um... Again, it's just like in a remote control, when the when the key gets pressed, it pushes this part down, and um, and then the the conductive coating on the underside of these little rubber this little rubber thing uh, closes a circuit on the circuit board and and gives you the note. Um, interestingly, I found out how the how the velocity how the volume um, you know velocity sensitivity works. It's due to the uh, like microsecond difference in timing from when this part 
closes the circuit and this part closes the circuit. Um, I had always assumed it had something to do with pressure, but it's really about um, the circuit measuring the time difference. Anyway, that has nothing to do with this problem um, or this solution anyway. Um, the problem I, the problem I was seeing is that um, or at least what I what I think what I thought might fix this is that um, like if I push the key down right over the sensor, it was working fine. And I got to thinking that maybe it's just not going down far enough and it's and it's flexing. Um, and sure enough, there's a the thing that keeps the key from making a lot of noise when you push it down is this little rubber piece that um, in this at least for this keyboard that the key kind of hits this sorry let me see if it'll focus it um, well the key hits the top of this little rubber surface and um, and that you know softens the the sound softens the you know mechanical noise of the of the key hitting it so like this this part here that like fits the rubber thing fits inside of the of the key cavity and um, anyway so the problem is that the key isn't coming down far enough because it's striking this this softening kind of rubber piece so what I did was I trimmed off uh, trimmed off a bit of the rubber. You can see on this side it's got these kind of little wings that are sticking out and on the other side they're trimmed off. So now the key will on each strike come down about an extra half a millimeter. Um, so if I put if I had this side up, which is how it was originally those little wings kept it from coming down quite as far. Now I'm going to put this back on to the, uh, the key bed, but um, but I put it with the uh, with the side that's you know kind of trimmed down a bit on the top. So let's put the key back. Let's put the key back in place. And put the spring back on. You got to kind of hook the spring under the bottom and then pull it back around the top so that it pops back into the cavity there. Alright, so let's see if that, how that worked. Again, this is the one that was good to begin with. Soft and quiet, or soft and loud. <laughs> so now, this guy does the same thing, soft and loud. It doesn't require nearly as much force to get sound out of it. So now it's more consistent with the neighboring keys. So again, uh, rather than going to all that trouble of taking the printed circuit board off and pulling all the rubber pieces off and cleaning them and Putting everything back in place, which which is a little bit risky because you know, you know you always might destroy something or it might not go back together again, right? Uh, turned out that the real solution was just to pop the key off, trim down the little rubber bumper that's that's keeping it from you know making a clacking noise when it goes down. Trim it down so it comes so that the travel of the key is maybe a you know a fraction of a millimeter farther. That uh, way it hits the sensor a little bit harder and uh, seems to work right now. So I hope this some helps somebody. Take care.